Okay, you rascally little chemistry students. Um, so this is going to be your first go at uh, this kind of flipped learning model where you're going to be listening to a lecture that I might normally give in class at home. All right, and that first lecture is going to be data types and reliability. So we're not going to jump into atoms and molecules and stuff like that. We're really going to start talking about numbers and units and what they look like in the chemistry world. Okay, so. Um, now, be sure you do the accompanying reading. So on the, the Edmodo site, I put up a PDF. Uh, it should take you no more than 10 minutes, all right? Limit your time. Skim through that. Get the gist, okay? Uh, but do that reading after you watch. I think it's just some supplemental, a little extra added information to what we're going to talk about anyways, okay? So do that reading, okay? Now, uh, so first kind of learning target here is we're going to look at being able to differentiate between qualitative and quantitative data, all right? So they're both types of data, both good data, or they can be good or bad. Um, but there, there's a key difference, and it's important to differentiate because they, they kind of have different purposes, all right? So first of all, qualitative data, right? So we're looking at the qual prefix there, the quality of something, right? And so when we look at qualitative data, we're talking about uh, maybe the color or what it looks like or smells like or sounds like or feels like, right? Those are all important information about something, but they are not uh, numerical data that have units attached to them. So for example, ponderosa pines, they are coniferous trees whose bark emits an organic chemical with a faint vanilla scent. Right? That's some good information about ponderosa pines, but it's not a number, it's not a direct measurement. Okay? Um, at room temperature, water has a relatively low viscosity. So that's describing a property of water, right? Um, but does it's not a measurement, it's not an actual temperature, it's not an actual uh, you know volume. Okay? So kind of the key indicator in qualitative data is uh, no numbers or units. Okay, so we're not including um, numbers and units in our qualitative data. All right. Now to contrast that, quantitative data. Right. We are referring to a the quantitative our quantity of something. Right. That prefix is important. So it provides precise numerical information about, uh, I should say, a substance or reaction, etc. Okay, uh, so if I was to tell you that the freezing point of pure water is 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius, that's a quantitative measurement. And the reason it's a quantitative measurement is you see we have a number attached to a unit. Now, uh, you guys are going to hear me, uh, particularly in the next lecture, really harp on units and how important they are. But uh, m almost all numbers in chemistry are going to be attached to a unit because there's some sort of measure. All right. Um, another example, at 20 degrees Celsius, ocean water has an average density of 1.02 grams per million. Right. So again, what do we have? We have number with unit, number with unit. Okay. And so what that does is it provides uh, information about a measurement. Okay, so key uh, learning target. Can you tell the difference between qualitative and quantitative data? Can you, if I give you a list of different types of data, would you be able to pick out which are qualitative, which are quantitative? This is probably one of the easiest things we do is just vocab at this point. All right, now moving ahead, we are now going to talk about accuracy versus precision and then what that looks like in terms of error. Okay, uh, so with accuracy, Right, accuracy is in in science at least. It's referring to how close a measurement is to the actual value. So, uh, a really common metaphor or analogy people make is to think of it like a dartboard. So, when you're playing darts, uh, just traditional darts, you throw a dart. You're typically trying to hit that little bullseye right there in the middle, right? So, the closer you are to that actual mark, that bullseye, the more accurate your throw is, right? And so if I have a, a, you know, a certain quantity of copper sulfate, for example, 
right? Uh, and I measure how much I have, I want to have an accurate measure. Okay, it's as close as I can get to how much copper sulfide I actually have. Right? So accuracy sometimes comes down to how good the instrument is, uh, but it also comes down to how careful of a measurer you are. And it kind of just depends on the situation. Right? Now, precision is related to accuracy, all right, but it's not the same thing. So precision uh, involves taking multiple measures. Right? And so if I was to take that copper sulfate and measure it three times, right, um, what that's going to do is tell me how precise my measurement is. And in terms of precision, if I measure three times, if all three measurements come out exactly the same, that means I'm being pretty precise. So going back again to our dartboard metaphor or analogy, right? So what I have here, let's say I throw three darts. If all three of those darts hit the same place right now that might not be the bullseye by the way i can be precise without being accurate but if all three of my darts hit the same place i'm a pretty precise dart thrower okay whether i'm accurate or not is different measure different function different uh category of information all right now of course what do we want what's our ideal when we do science right we want accuracy and precision. I want the best of both worlds there. I want to be both accurate by hitting that bullseye, and I want to be able to repeat that accuracy over and over and over by being precise. Okay? Uh, so let's let's look at this in, with some, some data. Let's look at some actual uh, numerical data, and let's see if we can pick out which uh, indicates accuracy, which indicates precision. So we got Fred... George and Bill here, all right? Each of them measured an object in its length, right? The actual length. So we know that the, the length of that object was measured by a professional or something like that to be 10.5 centimeters, okay? Uh, let's say Fred measures that three times. The first time, he gets 10.7 centimeters each time, right? For an average of 10.7. George comes along, he measures it at 10.4 then 10.9, and then 11.2, coming out with an average of 10.8. And Bill measures it at 10.5, 10.4, 10.6 for an average of 10.5. All right. Now, which data is most precise? Let's, let's uh, start there. Um, so with precise data, right, we're looking for what? We're looking for the same result each time. So if you do multiple measurements... Are we getting the same thing each time? So whose data is most precise? If we look at Fred here, we should see that he's 10.7, 10.7, 10.7. Three measurements a row, exactly the same thing. So Fred gets the prize for precision. All right. Uh, so we get that because we know George is all over the place here. That guy's crazy. Bill, not too shabby, right? Measurements are pretty close to each other right? But they're not as precise as friends, okay? Now, who's is most accurate? So accuracy refers to how close are we to the real length in this case, right? So how close am I to that 10.5 centimeters? Now, Fred, not too far off at 10.7, right? For all three of his measurements. Again, George, 10.4, 10.9, 11, he's all over the place. His average is 10.8, okay? But Bill, on the other hand, gets an actual 10.5 and only deviates by one-tenth of a centimeter in each of his three measurements at, at most, all right? So how far away from that actual measurement am I, right, uh, refers to accuracy. So Bill gets the prize for accuracy, okay? Now, again, in the ideal world, right, if you were just super good in measuring, we'd get three measurements all at 10.5 exactly. Okay, uh, but luckily here, you know, because he remains really close, his average, you know, get an average help, help sometimes resolve some of the precision issues, uh, you know, comes out to pretty darn accurate. Okay, so um, let's say we, we go through, we do some measurements, we compile that data in Google Sheets, which you are all really good at doing now, right? We do then need to figure out our error, all right? And this is where some math is going to come in. So error. Right, is the quantity by which a measured 
value deviates from the actual value. Okay, so, whoops, um, there are ways to calculate that, right? So, first of all, error is calculated by taking the accepted value and subtracting the experimental value, all right? Uh, could you end up with a negative number there? Yes, we typically kind of ignore that sign. So, we might even say an absolute value of that. Right, um, or just a difference between those two numbers, because you know the might, negative might tell you you're below or above or something like that. But usually we're just going to refer to you know as, as a you know 0.2 centimeters too high or 0.2 centimeters too low, right? Whereas the uh, percent error right takes that error value, so this value right here, and divides it by the accepted value and then multiplies by it. All right, so. We're going to put this into context for you because that's a little confusing without looking at real numbers. Okay, so accepted value again. So we're going to look at our data from Fred, George, and Bill, just like we did before. Okay, and so um, if we look at Fred's data, he has that real precise data, 10.7, right? Three measurements in a row. George, all over the place. He's a crappy lab student. And we got Bill, who's pretty precise but he's got the best accuracy so uh, we want to calculate the error and percent error for george's data all right and so the beauty of taking an average is we can go right there to that average value all right so now each measurement is going to have a different degree of error but we'll skip the average error so typically for error and percent error if you get a series of data we're going to use those average values uh, that we see right here okay uh, it just makes life easier. So, how do we find error again? Error is found by taking the accepted value and subtracting the experimental value, right? So, real quick, how could I do that? So, I'm going to take my ex accepted value is 10.5 centimeters minus, what was my experimental value? 10.8 centimeters. All right, and what I get there, again, I'm going to ignore my negative sign in this case. Just cause it screws things up. I get an error of 0 0.3 centimeters. That means my measurement, my accuracy, if you will, is off by 0.3 centimeters, which is actually uh, not that accurate of a measurement. We could do better than that. Most of you guys can at least. Okay, so that's my error. Error equals 10 point, or 0 0.3 centimeters. That's how far my average was off. So I'm basically comparing my experimental value, which is the real measurement, to that theoretical value. Okay? Now, um, so that's the trick, really, is which one's experimental, which one's the actual or accepted value. You should be able to read the problem to get that. So the next step, then, is let's turn it off. Let's express my error as a percent. And you just do this like any other percent. You want your grade on a test, you can take how much you got right, divided by the total, and times 100. All right? So we're going to do a similar value. What's my error? 0.3 centimeters. I'm going to go 0 0.3 centimeters over, right? What is my accepted value? 10.5 centimeters, and then times 100. And that'll give me my percent. All right? So. Use your handy daddy calculator, go 0.3 divided by 10.5 times 100, and I get two point, you know, kind of an ugly number, so I'm going to round that, okay, uh, to, let's say, 2.9%, okay? There are actually rules for rounding, and I violated them. We'll come back to that another time, uh, but... So we've got about a two about a two point nine percent error. That's how that works. Okay. So um, you guys make sure you do your company and reading. Right. This is a less than fifteen minute video. Right. So we're looking at twenty five minutes of homework tonight. Okay. So you go get them. You come into class ready to work on this stuff. That's the whole purpose of doing this at home. All right. I will see you guys in class.